Hey, Mark Warnke, the Goat Guy. So I want to share with you my recent experience with Thorn and Merciless and kind of speak about our modern culture and how we look at death and what's going on with that. Because I think it's, it's, really, it's really just a time to, to have that conversation. Now, let me quickly tell you that the experience with Thorn and Merciless, people have wished me a lot of condolences and, and I'm grateful for that. But it was, it was strange for me because people kept commenting how sad that must have been. And honestly, it, it didn't feel sad. It felt um, unfortunate is a better word in how I experienced it. But my feelings during that process was being in service to them. That's where all my energy was focused, was being in service to these two old goats that were getting ready to start losing their dignity and I wanted to put them down before they lost their dignity and I thought that was really important. And the dignity side of that is um, an animal that is, is, is so not able to take care of themselves that, you know, I, I see people let dogs and animals and pets languish on for way longer than they should. And, 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 and again, I want to not be judgmental of people that do that because I understand the compassion side of that. Um, and the difficulty with making those decisions. I completely understand that. But for me, I want an animal to go down when they, when they still have their dignity. And, um, and so for that moment, I felt like I was in service to them for the presence that I had in being tuned in them. And, and, and we had this really beautiful moment both with both of them. I had this beautiful moment with both of them where I told them I was really grateful for for them, I, I thanked God for them in our lives, and then I really checked in f to myself and 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 got a chance to look back, kind of at had I been as good to them as I could be, and and it, and it just all settled in, and it felt really resolved and beautiful, and the actual experience of shooting them and 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 you know it them going down super quickly and being lifeless and you know they basically ate the thing they love to eat most which is grain and they got love from dad and they they had a quiet moment with me that was really nice and they were eating their grain and the lights went out it was their experience and i got to hold them while they were doing their throes of death and 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 lay them down gently and and keep their face clean of the blood and those sorts of things it just out of respect and so for me the whole experience was actually quite beautiful i buried them in a beautiful place in a beautiful way together um, and i just want to quickly speak about how we look at death and we've become so disassociated from the subject of death now in that we hire our people to kill our animals that we eat it happens in another building completely separate from us and we're completely disassociated from the act of death in the animals that we consume we're completely disassociated even with we're a vegetarian of the animals that lose their lives to grow that food, which they do. Um, and we, it happens somewhere else, so we act like it doesn't happen. And then in our human deaths that we experience, those guys, that all happens with a white coat. It happens on the other side of the door, um, you know, in, and people take care of that stuff for us. They get them ready for burial. They, they put them in the ground. They put them in a casket so we don't have to look at them when they die. And as human beings, as in a culture, we've become so disassociated from the act of both animal and human death that we have avoided all the discomfort as a result of that and the lessons that we can learn from that experience. And so we've become really dysfunctional in our relationship with death. And it's as beautiful as experience as birth. You know, if I rewind the clock 200 years ago, we would have, and by my age at 50, I would have lost maybe my spouse, one of my children, lots of my friends, definitely my mom and dad and my grandparents. I probably would have been there for many of their deaths. I would have been holding them as they died. I would have washed their body of the bodily fluids that come out after you die. I would have put them in the hole. I would have thrown dirt on their face. I would have done all that stuff. So in a very small blip of time, 
in the human culture, we now have a complete disassociation, <coughs> no relationship with death anymore. And as a result, we've become dysfunctional with it in that we want to avoid the discomfort of it. And number two, we draw these conclusions about the process of death that aren't based on all of life before about 200 years ago. And so I would challenge you to rethink about how you think about death and being involved in it. If you're gonna meet, eat meat, then be a participant in the process of the meat that you eat. And if you're, if you're going to have a family member pass, then be involved with that passing. It can really be a beautiful learning moment. Remember, the greatest gift that death gives us is the lessons that are learned by other people. I recently went to a funeral of an acquaintance of mine, and, and I always used to shun away from funerals. And, and I went alone just so I could be completely present to the beautiful message that gets shared with that huge room of people and, and hold space for the ones that were learning valuable lessons, including being present to the curious moments that show up that I could learn from this beautiful life and the end to it. And so I would ask you to challenge yourself to be more involved with the death process of both animals and human beings because it's gonna so benefit your overall evolution in the, in the opportunity to learn and be better. It's one of the greatest lessons in the last moment of life that people who pass and animals who pass can teach us is our presence to it, our presence and the ability to be present to what's being taught to us. So that's my distinction for today. And I hope you find that valuable and I'm really grateful for your comments. So take care, bye-bye.